Well, it's nice to be here with you. Um, do feel you can eat while I'm talking. Please don't waste it. Uh, but I hope you can hear me at the same time. Um, I'm an old man, which matters in some of your cultures and doesn't matter in others of your cultures. I've been to many of the countries that you've come from, perhaps more to China than anywhere else, um, and have always loved working there. My job this week is to uh, explain what the Lord Jesus Christ claims to offer to people from every part of the world. And what I'm going to do during this week is to talk and try to explain different parts of this little book that you've got on your table. It's got just the word John on the front of it. John was one of Jesus' best friends and became somebody whose life was completely changed by his friendship with Jesus. And he wrote this book to try and recommend Jesus to all sorts of other people. And what one of the things I really want all of you to do this week is to read this book. You can read it just like you read a newspaper to get some information. John actually tells us that he had a special reason in writing it. On page 58 of that book, you will find in the last paragraph, it says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. So he's saying that there are two purposes in which he wrote it, which I want you to read and try and investigate. Number one purpose was he's giving you evidence so that you may believe about Jesus. Believe who he is and what he can do for you. I remember once having a discussion with a professor in Beijing, and after the discussion, a few hours later, he phoned me, and I answered on my cell phone, on my mobile phone. He said, Dick, there is just one important question. Can I know anything for sure about God? And I said, I'm not going to discuss this on the phone. I'm not sure who's listening. I will come to you at once. And I jumped on the subway and got to him. And we read together from this book. And very much to my surprise, as we read the first page, he kept saying to me, yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. And I thought, I'm really surprised by this. I thought he'd be saying, no, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. But somehow as he read it, he said, yes, this makes sense. Now, I dare you, maybe you will find the same experience. But he doesn't just want us to be intellectually convinced. He also says, I'm choosing these things so that by believing, you may have life in his name. That is to say, Christianity is not primarily an idea or a way of looking at the world, though it is partly that. But number one, it is a relationship with Jesus Christ that changes everything in a person's life. Now we're going to look at that in different ways. I suggest that you take this away with you and you read it with a pen, underline the bits that you think are exciting and could work for you, and put a question mark beside the bits that you think, I don't agree with that, or I don't like that, or I don't understand that, and then bring your questions, maybe to somebody who brought you here, or to my wife and me, and we will talk about it. But I just want to encourage you, read it for yourself. 
because then you will really get a good picture of who Jesus is and what he offers. One time I was lecturing in international relationships in, uh, in Beijing University in Beida and uh, they were postgraduate students and they asked me all sorts of impossible questions like how did I come to terms with my country's imperialistic past? Uh, and uh, questions like, if we invade Taiwan, what do you think America will do? And other <laughs> impossible questions. And then suddenly someone raised his hand and said, excuse me, I have a question. I said, what is your question? He said, what is the meaning of life? I was rather surprised. But you see, this Beijing professor friend of mine, he was an engineer, and in his spare time, he wrote novels about the meaning of life. And he said, it's really about me and my search. He said, I searched for it in science, and I wrote papers that were published internationally, and I didn't find the meaning of life. So I thought I would look for the meaning of life in literature. He said, and I read great literature. He said, I even read all the novels of Charles Dickens, the English novelist, who I think is terribly boring. And he said, I didn't find the meaning of life. And then he said, I thought I would study philosophy. And he said, I studied the German philosopher Nietzsche, who taught that God is dead. And then he said, I went to a conference of philosophers, and I met some English philosophers, and I said to them, what is the meaning of life? And they said to me, that is a meaningless question. And then he said, one day I went up north to where my parents live. He said, I went into a little, quite secret church. This was many years ago. And he said, I don't think the people could answer my questions, but I think they had the answer. He's saying, tell me, what is the meaning of life? Now, when we look at this book, it begins by introducing us to Jesus. And it says three rather interesting things about Jesus. The first thing it says is that Jesus makes sense. In the beginning was the Word. Those are the first words that John writes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's a very strange thing, isn't it? I like to translate it a little bit differently and say, in the beginning was the reason, was the meaning, was what makes sense. But John is going to say, this isn't a philosophy. The key to understanding everything about your life and about what it's all about is in Jesus. And then he goes on and he says, through him all things were made without him nothing has been made that was made and then again in the fourth paragraph he says the world was made through him i find that very interesting once i met a a, a student from thailand who was doing his scientific research for a PhD in Glasgow and he said to me um, Dick there's no point in you talking to me about Christianity he said because um, I believe that there is no God at all and my upbringing in Thailand teaches me that there is no God and there is no meaning and then after a while he said, oh Dick, I'm not very good at this, he said, because the more I do my research, the more I'm quite convinced that somebody made it all. And I said, no, that doesn't fit with your upbringing, but it's a good idea. And we carried on discussing, and again he said to me, you need to understand I've been brought up as someone who believes that there's no God and there's no meaning. And then he says, oh, but it's so embarrassing, he said, because the more I study, it's not just that I believe someone made it all, but I'm trying to talk to him. Now, that doesn't make sense from his background, but it 
does make sense if this real person was involved in making us all. And that means that the question, what is the meaning of my life? Is there a plan for me? Is there some reason why I'm here? It makes sense if the God who made everything made you and me. And the key to understanding that is Jesus. And then the third thing he says about Jesus and meaning is that he brings light. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And then again, it says a little bit later on at the end of the third paragraph, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. John is making some big claims about Jesus, isn't he? He's saying everything that is beautiful and lovely in people, it actually comes from him. But it also means that, do you find sometimes, perhaps some of you do, that you feel that you're in the dark and then you think, hey, maybe this is the answer. I think that may be Jesus Christ beginning to shine into your light to give you a bit of understanding. Now, today I don't want to look in detail at one part of this book. I want you to read it all first, very quickly. What I want to look at is just one of the special claims of Jesus that makes sense of the meaning of life. And you can find this on page 42. On page 42 in chapter 14, and just over halfway down the page in the uh, section headed Jesus, the way to the Father, Thomas says to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There are three things that he claims about you and life. He says, I am the way. When I first came to Durham, I got lost. I expect you do sometimes as well, yes? It's okay if you've got a map, but you can still get lost, especially if you want to know how to buy or where to buy something at good value that's not crazily expensive, yes? And you ask somebody the way and they give you directions and they talk for so long that at the end of it, you are still lost. Mm -hmm. It's so much better if that person you ask the directions says to you, I'm going that way, I'll take you with me. Don't you reckon? Then you don't need to remember all the directions, you just need to keep close to that person. And if you're going through the market on a Sunday, you, on a Saturday, you have to keep very close because there's a lot of distractions. Yeah? In the language that Jesus used, if somebody was prepared to come with you so that you reach the right destination, he would say, I am the way. And that's important because when Christians say that they have meaning in their life, they do not mean that they know all the answers about everything that's going to happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. They don't. What they mean is, I know the one who knows. I know the one who made the plan and I want to go places with him. Now, the opposite of finding the way of the one who made you is to make your own way, isn't it? The most favorite song in funerals in Britain is Frank Sinatra's song, I Did It My Way. And most British people who are not interested in Christianity say, well, you've got to make your own reason for living. And I suppose if Jesus is not true, that might be a good thing to do. Better than nothing. 
But if Jesus is true, then it's a terrible waste, isn't it? I want you to understand that Jesus made a lovely promise. On, on, on page 23, in paragraph 6, Jesus said, Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Some people say to me, well, there's not much to life. It's sure you're going to be born, and it's sure you're going to die, and everything in between is a bit of a muddle. That's it. Some people feel that as they're looking for the meaning of their life, they're like the man here, who's next one, who's wandering around in the dark. Is there any meaning to my life? And sometimes people say to me, I've got my ambitions, but in the end, I'm just going nowhere. And Jesus says, yeah. But I know my plans for you. A man in Hernan province once said to me, I've made a mess in my, with my life. I need to get back in harmony with the one who made me. That's what the Christian faith is about, getting back in harmony with the one who made us. So Jesus says, I am the way. I want you to welcome me by my spirit into your life and I want to go places with you. You can talk to me and trust me and I will guide you. The second thing that Jesus offered in this lovely promise in chapter 14 on page 42, he says, I am the truth. At the end of Jesus' life, Jesus was talking to a very important official, an Italian, a Roman official, and Jesus was explaining to him, if you want to know the truth, you will listen to me. And the man who was questioning him, a man called Pontius Pilate, said to him, what's truth? Maybe even some of your lecturers here would say that. Well, what's truth? Who knows? In the first chapter on the first page, it tells us right at the end of the first page, the last two words, no one over the page has ever seen God, but God the one and only who is at the Father's side has made him known. What we Christians claim, and you need to read this and see if you can agree with it, is that God so wanted us to understand him, not just to know he was there very far away and very powerful and remote, but God so wanted us to know him that we could say true things about him and understand him and share with one another about him that he came down to our level and taught himself in human words as a person speaking to other people. He did that so that human beings could know special, beautiful, life-changing things about God. Some people say, well, I don't believe that there's a truth that's true for everybody. I believe that Jesus is the truth for everybody all over the world. If you don't believe that, then you may be talking about, well, this is my truth, and that is my truth. But actually, there are some areas of life where we want the truth, not my truth. When I was a child, my brother got struck down with poliomyelitis. We asked a doctor his opinion, and he said, well, the truth is, he's just got a headache, he'll be better tomorrow. Unfortunately, that wasn't the truth. The next day, my brother was paralyzed from the waist downwards. The doctor was very sincere. 
he believed that what he said was the truth, his truth. But actually, it wasn't the truth. And my brother nearly died because of it. It's important for us to think about this. Is there such a thing as real answers that are true wherever you come from? Jesus said, I am the truth. And lastly, Jesus said, I am the life. He talks about life in two senses. As you read this, you find that he actually says to somebody who's crying because her brother has died, he says to this woman, the one who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. On one of the days this week, we're going to talk about the amazing things that Jesus says about death. Because we can look at each other here and say, we are so different. And our destinies are so different, yes? Shall I tell you one thing that we've got in common, as well as speaking English? One thing we've got in common, we're all going to die. So you better come on Thursday and hear what Jesus offers for that. But here I just want you to see that he offers a life that will never die. But he doesn't just offer something for when you die. Because he also said, I have come that you may have life in all its fullness. And life in all its fullness is life that that man in Hernam was looking for. Life in harmony with God. He said, I've made a mess. I've got myself dirty. I need to get back. And you may say, well, I've got my own life and I'll live it my way. And I will say to you today, where is it leading to? Where are you going? Where will you end up? You might say like a Japanese person I read about who committed suicide. He said, I must solve my problems on my own. No outside help is available. So he killed himself. I wish he had known about Jesus and the wonderful help that he can bring. The difference that it makes to be a woman or a man in harmony with the one who made them. And the last thing I want to say is this, that the meaning of life is not a philosophy, it's a person. I was having a discussion with some philosophers in Beijing University on one time. Sorry for those of you who are not Chinese for so many Chinese illustrations today, but there are some of you for whom it's okay. And as I was talking to these philosophers in, Beida, in Beijing University, they started to teach me about the difference between what they called culture Christians and real Christians. A culture Christian is someone who wants a new way of looking at life, and he reads this and says, it's very interesting, I like the moral values, I like the philosophy. And these philosophers said to me, but they've missed the key. He said, because they want the ideas, but they don't want the person. And Christianity is about coming to know and to trust Jesus, the person. On page one, it says in the middle of this page, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to those that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, 
children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. Do you see that? The culture Christian knows about Jesus, but doesn't recognize him and welcome him. But then he talks about the other way, the other way which he wants to work for us, those who received him, who welcomed him, who trusted him. One time when I was here in, in, in Durham, uh, I was working with a group of students and they were coming every night to learn about Jesus. And on about the second night, there was one man, he said, I'm going to read the whole Bible for two hours every night until I understand it. And he even read until four o'clock one morning because he was working late in his labs. And I said to him, are you talking to Jesus yet? And he said to me, how can I? I don't even know him. So I said, okay. And he went and he read some more and he learned some more. And then later in the week, he said to me, Dick, he said, I think I'm ready to talk to Jesus now. Will you introduce me? So I introduced him. And as we talked to God together, I said, now, this is, and I gave his name. And he wants to begin to talk to you as well now because he's learnt enough to trust and to talk to you. Becoming a Christian is beginning that. You need to be convinced in your mind, this guy was right. I don't know him enough to talk to him yet. But the goal is not that you just get more ideas. But like the man in Hernan says, you get in harmony with the one who made you. Do you get that? I hope that makes sense. On your tables, there's a little bit of paper that's got three bullet points of questions that might help you in discussion at your tables to think about that a little bit more. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at the claims that Jesus makes about our broken world. Some of us feel fine at the moment, perhaps some of us feel broken as well as the brokenness of the world and we'll begin to explore that uh, tomorrow. But tonight let's think a little bit more about the meaning of your life and the meaning of my life as we share together, okay? Thank you.